don't look out the window. For weeks now, people have been reporting family members being abducted from their homes. All across the neighborhood, hundreds of cases have been filled, and everyone had been questioning the police, relentlessly wanting answers. Unfortunately, few people had ever spotted the alleged abductor, and the ones that had seen him sound crazy. There was never any sign of footprints, and they doubt there's any getaway vehicle involved. However, one fact that is always the same is that talon markings are always found on the windows. There is always a break-in. Nothing is ever stolen except for the body. Screeching sounds are heard, but the victim is always gone before anyone had a chance to see what is wrong. So, one night, some of the local teenagers thought it would be a good idea to have a sleepover until things quieted down and started going back to normal. There were five of them, and just for safety measure, they thought it would be wise if they stayed in the same room. At first, they all watched a movie. Then they talked for a few hours. When nothing happened, everyone went straight to sleep. In the middle of the night, a low screeching sound could be heard from outside the house. The sound made when someone runs a hand over the glass of a window. Only a few people woke up and just assumed it was part of their dream. Those assumptions were quickly replaced by fear, as this time, it sounded more like claws moving across the window to their room. Everyone woke up this time in a cold sweat. Not a single soul dared to move, afraid that whatever was outside would hear them. No one dared to look out the window. It was an unwritten rule. In the inner depths of our minds, we know not to look out the window, but we are just as equally tempted just to know what's on the other side. Well, tonight they got their wish. One of the teens thought it was just a friend playing a prank and looked outside. Before anyone had a chance to stop him, a creature stared back, gazing into his eyes. Blackness was there where its eyes should have been. Without warning, the horrendous creature's head broke through the window, its talons gripped onto the closest victim and then vanished just as quickly as it had flew in. Gone. Just like that. The rest of the four survivors trembled with fear, backing into a corner, while some of them rushed to the phone to call the police. Others tried to look around for whatever weapons they could find. Suddenly, everyone heard a loud scream, then a thud on the ground. When they glanced over by the window, they nearly had a heart attack. Their friend was still alive, but barely. His bones were torn out of his skin and still struggled for life. It wasn't until the beast lunged its head through the victim's skull that he stopped moving. Now the demon stood up on both hind legs, blood gushing from its mouth as it bit into the brains of the corpse. It was now visible that the demon had wings, horribly deformed. The outline of the wings was black and dark between them, almost a deep red. Its face had a jagged edge all around, and its hands looked like daggers. They had only looked at the demonic beast for a fraction of a second before one of the youngsters headed straight out of the house. This time, the creature's next target was a girl. She was running away with a pistol, but no matter how fast her legs ran, the beast was faster. The girl was shooting behind her, hoping the thing would either die or stop its chase. It dodged every bullet, and this was only making it matter. At lightning quick speed, the beast stopped right in front of her. Before she had time to react, the demon's mouth gaped open and venom spewed out. The venom burned the teen's skin like acid. Her cries were in vain as no one left the house to help. 
Just as the venom melted down to her bone, she gave out one last horrific cry and fell down, ending her grip for life. The rest of the teens still had their weapons and clutched them tightly in their arms. They had no idea when the creature was coming back. But its footsteps could be heard in the distance, breaking the gravel and pavement with its sharp, talon-like feet. The crackling on the ground grew louder, and they knew the monster was coming back to finish them off. Now the sound was coming from the side of the house. A few moments later, it came from the rooftop. Before long, the ceiling began to give way. The three remaining teens hurtled over each other, trying to leave the room. The hideous abomination finally broke through. Now that it was inside the house, everyone left as quickly as possible. They raced over to a neighbor's house, almost ramming into the door. They screamed at the top of their lungs, pleading for someone to help them. At a closer glance, all the windows were barred. It was the same across every single house but their own. But why? Suddenly, the beast swooped down and picked up another youngster, soaring right into the air and disappearing. The last two teens darted off into the darkness. They were so desperate to get away, they had looked for the nearest car to steal. But no matter how far they scampered away, there were no cars in sight. Where did everyone go? They said to themselves. Just when they had hoped that the demon was gone, a body fell on top of them. It was the body that the beast had taken up into the sky earlier. The corpse had its throat torn open. As they struggled to get up, the beast appeared before them and lifted one of the teens with its hands. Slowly, it gripped its hand over the teen's neck and squeezed. It kept on squeezing the life out of him, even when his face turned red. In an instant, his eyes popped out. Shortly after, his head along with it, it rolled onto the ground, staring at the only survivor left. The horrid expression jolted the young teen up from under the deceased and once again, the chase continued. He had no idea where to go and all of his friends were now lifeless bodies scattered all over the neighborhood. The young boy was now running towards the local park. It was closed but he just climbed over the fence and quickly landed on the other side. Then he got an idea on how to slow the beast down. If he ran into the wooded part of the park, then the monster wouldn't be able to see him from above while it flew. There would be too many trees in the way and would force it to travel by foot, so he tried his theory. As soon as the young man rushed in, he could hear footsteps behind him, twigs and branches snapping all over. By now, no matter how badly he wanted to escape, his body gave in to the will of nature. He gasped harder for air and realized he could run no longer. So the boy leaned up against a tree and held on so he wouldn't fall. His knees were shaking and he was even too afraid to wipe the sweat from his face. He knew that any sudden moves might make the beast aware of where he was. The last survivor slowly looked out of the corner of his eye to see if he could find the creature anywhere in sight. It was gone. Did he outsmart the beast? There were no more sounds of footsteps or low tone growls. Even so, he couldn't make his body stop trembling. Before the young man had a chance to leave, a massive blow struck the tree. It went right through the tree and out the other side, right through the boy's chest. It was a disfigured hand, and it was now holding his heart. Two years later, a family moved into the neighborhood looking for a home. An old man gave them a tour of it and said, This place is not for the weak of heart. It's a peaceful place, because we do all that is necessary to keep it that way. What do you mean? The father of the family responded back. The old man looked up as if he was looking straight up into the sky. At night, a gargoyle swoops down over the neighborhood, looking for those that have been bad. Sometimes, 
it will snatch its prey right out of the window and fly off. Then it will drop its victims, hoping that the fall will kill them instantly. Dear God, the wife shouted out, why would it do such a horrible thing? What's to stop my children from getting snatched up at night? The grumpy old man slowly turned to her. When he spoke, you could see a big gap between his teeth. People that are bad don't deserve to live anyway. Besides, everyone that's not involved gets the evacuation to leave. You see, when the gargoyle comes out and sees the houses that are barred shut, it moves to the next house. Its menacing dark eyes will stare into the window, waiting for whoever is there to stare back. So if you hear a screech at night, or a deep groan, or even a tapping outside your window, whatever you do, don't look out the window. <laughs>